SoFloRadio.com and SoFloTelevision.com. Since the dawn of civilization, the elusive quest in pursuit of the perfect drink continues to evolve. Now more than ever, we reap the rewards of this passion. The perfect vintage, the finest brew, or a spirit of optimum age in class. And now, SoulFlowRadio.com invites you to discover the wonderful world of booze by the glass. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Buy the Glass. What a wonderful show we have for you this evening. I'm joined by my guest host, Jason. Hey, hey. And I've been crazy about the bowl. Yeah, How do you know it's, it's going to be wonderful a wonderful show? Hey, oh, you know why I know it's going to be a wonderful show? Because you have the beautiful yeah. and luxurious Miss Beth M. Sadowski in the house. I should have just hello. shut my pie hole about the legs, shut right? Shut goddamn pie hole. You know, and you today. know how much we love Beth is we always left Still up her, her free up. olive oil shaving because she is the queen of olive oil. I heart olive oil, and I love it so much more when Beth is around. Thank you so much for joining us in studio. Well, thanks for having me. It's always such a pleasure. And may I say, and I think that everybody's going to agree here, you look so lovely. Uh, what have you done to yourself? you got a, kind of like a makeup. She looks well, beautiful. I, I cut my hair since last time I was It hair. looks great. It looks and good. the alcohol helps, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Alcohol, alcohol has been helping me. Alcohol in your yeah. hair? For years. <laughs> <laughs> no, <but laughs> what? you guys make you think I'm Oh, okay. That's it. Yeah, that too. <laughs> 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 not that I've been drinking for the last three hours or anything, but uh, it's so wonderful to have you here. And, you know, the thing is, is that not only is Beth lovely and an educator, which I love about her. Um, she's got some cutting edge products. She's in the scene. She's happening. She's hot. She's really affiliated with a lot of big uh, mainstream, I mean, you know, a lot of uh, retail outlets out there where you can find her products. And we're going to get into all that and, and plugging all the wonderful things. Cutting that are edge best. is debatable. We'll bring that up. No, later. but cutting edge is not debatable because what are we doing tonight? Vinegar-based cocktails, We've which wow. are the height of cutting edge, Jason. They've been around since the 18th century. You know oh, what, though? But man. it takes somebody like Beth M. Sadowski to bring them back to the forefront. And, they are and a medium like By the Glass Show to bring it all together, and I bring it to you. That's right. All right, all right. All right? So there's nothing debatable about it. Isn't that right? And Dio gives me the nod in the background. All right? Thanks. So as, as I say this to you and I, and I introduce you, tell me a little bit. Let's start off with the people that don't know. Now, Beth had a prior appearance on the show, which was exceptional. I mean, it was one of our fun. And, and you know what? It was one of the better shows where we actually did shots of vinegar. We did. We did. We did. Yeah. We did. And there was, it was fantastic. And I really enjoyed it. And it kind of is a precursor, a setup, because I don't think a lot of people understand that the, here's the geek part, acetobacteria that really happens in beer uh, is something that happens due to oxidation. It is a form of bacteria that turns beer, wine, or such, or even grape juice before it's fermented. It can happen. turns it into vinegar or vinegar-like notes. Um, this can happen in a beer that has been aged in a certain way, uh, i.e. like a Flanders Red or a, some type of Brettanomyces or a certain type of yeast that can give an acetobacter type of aspect to a, a, a beverage and people learn to enjoy this there are all kinds of sour beers on the market and this kind of falls into that range of really cool and hip to take the actual vinegar because all it is is the next step of of real fermentation and, and of, of oxidation and what happens to these products and bringing them into the forefront with with something that we can mix it with let's you know we are masters of mixology in this world we we mix all kinds of things together why not take this to the next level right beth absolutely yeah let's do it i'm ready How, what is some of your give me some feedback the, with the world you know the cutting edge world or what's going on with the world of vinegar today and, and olive oil for that matter you, you know, well, specifically the vinegars, you know, a lot of people, the vinegars are very good for you. Wine vinegars, fruit vinegars are very... Apple cider vinegar. Apple so, cider vinegar, yes. Jason goes to a doctor. Yeah, he swears by it, a shot of it every day. So That and tequila. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, so the way I look at it, it's all about balance. You're balancing out these very healthy vinegars with a little alcohol, a little yin in you your life. Un I mean, I don't necessarily know this for a reason, for, for sure, but w what is it about the vinegar? Does it thin your blood, give you good... What is it? Do you know? It balances um, your pH. That's what he says. Oh. It balances your pH levels. It's very cleansing and detoxifying. Oh. Um, the vinegars that I brought um, today are, are Rosendal. They come from a small family farm in South Africa. Right. And each one is macerated with different botanicals. 
these botanicals have different um, health benefits for you. Oh, fantastic. You know, such as lavender or hibiscus or green tea. So each one, um, you now, know. Now, do they steep the actual raw elements into the into the vinegar, or how does that work? It, I know they're macerated. Do they macerate the grape as it's turning into uh, vinegar, or do they turn it into grape juice, then have it turn to vinegar, then steep the products in it? They The product's likely, made right? into vinegar, then yeah. it's macerated into it. It's all a cold process. Okay, it's cold process. And then um, it sits in there, they strain it, and then it, they continue to age the product after. Do they age it in wood? Wood, oak, oak oh. barrels, yeah. Mm -hmm. Kind of like one of the fine whiskeys that we've oh, had on yeah. the show these, recently. These ones are um, they're matured an average of 12 years. They use a Solaris system to age them. George only matured for 12 years. No, I, I, yeah. Yeah, after that, he was... Don't skating. exaggerate. <laughs> At least you're not going backwards. <laughs> He's only going backwards when he is skating. Right. He does that, you know, yeah, the crisscross. Right. Right? So yeah. And driving. Right. What we're drinking yeah. tonight, is it a shrub? <laughs> well, not necessarily. It looks like liquid to me. I don't know. Well, no, that's what they call Vinegar drinks. So, shrubs. Well, shrubs are actually, it's it's a mixture of fruit, sugar, and a vinegar that's made um, into, that's what they, the, the bartenders and the top mixologists no are calling these days. That's these, awesome. Jason cutting edge. These are Wikipedia. not shrubs because yeah. there's no sugar in it. It's just a natural um, right. vinegar that's been aged and reduced by okay, itself. So is a shrub something you buy pre-sugared vinegar, or can we make a shrub by could, adding some vinegar to the drinks we make tonight? You can uh, make a shrub. So we could uh, take some fresh fruit. Okay. Uh, some sugar or a simple syrup or something comparable to that and a vinegar, any type of vinegar. Now, have and you, you made some syrups over here? What is this that you made in your oh, little green Tupperware? I, I yeah. did. I don't, can, it, can the camera see it? If you hold it up to it. So um, I made a jalapeno simple syrup. Wow. Very, very simple. Just water, sugar, and I stuck the whole jalapeno in there and boiled that it down. That is beautiful. I didn't want to have to strain it later. It was making my life very simple. Yeah. So um, it's it's great if you want to, you want to see yeah, your finger It looks kind of like a science experiment. It, it does. But, it's, a little, uh, it's a little shriveled up now. <laughs> it certainly is, sweetheart. I, no, I'm just kidding. I left the jalapeno in there for you know aesthetics. It's, yeah, it's yummy, smelling. It's got a nice vegetable. I don't want to touch it. You know, <laughs> it smells a little bit more like green beans than it does jalapeno. I don't want to touch your pepper. And I, and I think that just because it's shriveled. shriveled. And, I, and I think that. Uh, That's right. I think that it's really nice quality, actually. The shriveled really, pepper? No, no, no. <laughs> the, the green bean takes the wrinkles out of it. Take the wrinkles out of it. It was nice when it was shriveled. <laughs> George Costanza in the pool. <laughs> Shrink it! Yeah, nice and shriveled. They don't go together. Yeah. But uh, no, this is, quite, this is quite nice, actually. There's a nice um, green bean, like a nice sweet green bean that comes off that. I can't wait to pour that in. And the thing is, is that we've just had some fruit infused beverages on the show we did a show about fruit infused tequila where they used the jalapeno tequila which was good for making let's say a bloody mary do you think that you could work that concept in with this type of uh uh, simple syrup, maybe like into like a drink that would have vegetables in it, like a Bloody Mary. Whatever. I mean, the the ax the um the aspect of it is just you can do anything you want, right? Oh, absolutely. With the syrups or the vinegar or both? Well, both. Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. You know, with with these syrups I make, um, you know, when you speak of Bloody Marys, my new thing yeah. is forget about the t um the vodka. I, I have okay. whiskey Bloody Marys. Yeah, oh, I want to hear oh, all wow. about it. I love cool. whiskey Bloody Marys. So, um, I actually have um one of these. You could do a little um shot of this vinegar. I would go. Um, from one of the more savory ones, so uh -huh. you get that like vegetable taste to it, and a little um, jalapeno. Savory absolutely. translates in the mouth for uh, mouthfeel world is umami. I'm afraid, but umami. let's do it. Umami. Umami. Yeah, umami means that it has a savory or meaty kind of soy sauce as umami, or a nice mackerel fish. It's just Sounds for you good. at home that are scoring. Anyway, so <laughs> that, that's absolutely wonderful. I can't wait to try some of this stuff. But tell me a little bit about uh, where Beth got started and everything. Now, I, I had the pleasure of meeting Beth at the, uh, the Johnson & Wales when I was uh, t you know, sitting in teaching a, a class. And she was, uh, it was one of her classes that she was uh, chaperoning, so to speak. How's it going down there? Are you still working down there? What's going on? Um, I, uh, I am. I yeah. teach uh, one class a term there as an adjunct professor. Um, last term, I taught a non-alcoholic beverage course. Really? Yeah, it's not what was that like? You know, it was, it was actually very interesting, and th the students seemed to be interested. But so is that like uh, like craft sodas? Did you make and soda? Tea well, yeah. you know, you know, we talk. It's funny you say that because you know, welcome to Buy the Glass, by the way, a show about beverage culture, uh, SoFlo Radio, every Thursday at six o'clock, and uh, BuyTheGlassShow dot com, where you can see a whole a hundred and fifty a bevy of shows on everything under the sun. And one of those things that I really want to do in the upcoming future is do a show about some non alcoholic beverages. I mean, mm -hmm. this I year, make root beer. 
Root, root beer, beer is one, but that's like a soda. But there's like tea, coffee. I mean, right. there's a lot of different really crazy drinks that are out there that are people are enjoying. People are very health conscious these days for yeah. non-alcoholic beverages. And right. you've seen a lot of trendy restaurants. There's actually a menu like craft non-alcoholic beverage cocktails being made. Give us some examples, please. Um, You know, you, you can do one with a vinegar drink. So I would say, you know, a club soda with um, maybe a jalapeno syrup and a splash of orange soda and... Um, um, some fresh fruit in it. Yeah, you know, it's just it's just people who don't want to drink. Maybe they have health reasons or just. But the cocktail yeah. aspect can be created without the alcohol. Exactly. Wow, and you're teaching a class on that, huh? Mm-hmm. So that's I, cutting edge. I actually uh, challenged my students for a term project was right. to develop a non-alcoholic beverage program for a restaurant, hotel, or a cruise line, something to that extent. That's amazing. It was very challenging for them. I bet. Yeah, it, it's interesting because yeah, how, how would how would we go about that to make a non-alcoholic beverage that was actually yeah I really do like uh, you know it's funny everything here is so I make based homemade on lemonade all the time. All right, so there's a perfect example. You make homemade lemonade mm-hmm. at all the time. So let's break it down to where out of the homemade lemonade, what you're doing is squeezing fr- uh, fresh fruit juices. Also, what I do sometimes, I just take like uh, you know gassed water or whatever, carbonated yeah, water, carbonated and I just water. squeeze lemon and limes in it, or put sugar, make my own like Sprite. I do that all the time. That's a good one, too. I would almost like to make a drink that has the flavor of coffee, but is like a soda. What do you think? As a funky beverage. Coffee I think it sounds great. Yeah. yeah, right? Yeah. That'd be cool, huh? I mean, we've got to take, like, you know, like, what you would do, like, you take, like, the carbonated water, and you, like, somehow get the uh, coffee bean flavors into the water, and then sweeten it up, so it's kind of like a yeah, soda coffee. It could be done. But has it ever been done? I don't think you've heard hey, of it. There's no. probably Am coffee. I, like, cutting edge? There's I'll probably coffee-flavored syrups a, you can use. Yeah. No syrups? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah I think the, the term for the show tonight is cutting edge. Yeah, absolutely. We're, we're cutting edge. Manhattan special pure espresso coffee soda. It's already Gosh, done. Darn it! You're quite the Googler over there. He's Google eyed. Fast. fast. He is fast. That's why we have him. It's not just for his devilishly good looks. Anyway, we're all looking good today with our. Yeah, we, are, we really yes. are. And by the way, thank you, Beth, for bringing these antlers. You're welcome. This, you know, in the spirit really, of the holidays, it is awesome. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> just anything to make us shake our heads a little bit. That's more. Right. Not much though. You could uh, get in. It looks like Manhattan's the only one. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And also, if you could like maybe uh, take that concept and twist it a little bit. Maybe like a vinegar-based coffee soda. Hey, who knows? We could do something crazy with it. We can we can get as wild as we want to be because the only thing that's stopping us out there is our imagination. Here's a recipe for coffee soda. So next, you're time. kidding me. No, I swear. Can we post that on the body glass page? Yeah, everybody out there, we're gonna make a coffee soda recipe because you don't get enough caffeine out of your regular cola. You really need to drink coffee soda, and uh, we need to uh, you know make it popular and interesting. But Back to the olive oil. So iHeartOliveOil.com, one of my favorite aisle, olive oil uh, websites. Because what you can do is, especially during the holidays, hey, folks, you got a great gift idea, you need something, go to iHeart Olive Oil. Makes a wonderful gift. Oh, absolutely. I mean, do you get a lot of business during this time of year? Absolutely. Olive oil makes everything better, Yeah, period. she has gift sets and stuff. Not yeah. only for shaving your legs. Jason does it all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, it's disturbing, but you know, I let My him do it. My personal area, it's actually. Certain, as yeah, long as he doesn't do it in the studio. I started to outsource for services. I was getting too many hits for leg shaving on the website. So <laughs> that was all hired, George. That was all hired, George. We hired a third-party <laughs> company to handle it. And... And I should have shut my mouth because, look, jeans down to her feet, down to her toes I today. Know, oh, I know. I, I purposely did not wear a dress I, no, or skirt because, no, yeah. you know. <laughs> she didn't want me licking her legs again. Like, she said she had olive oil should all over we, her legs. Next thing you know, I'm under the table. Should we tell everyone the backstory of the olive oil shit like please, shaving? Please do. Yeah. Please do. So when I, when I was here in the last show, um, I had explained that olive oil is great for your body as far as um, aesthetics-wise. And it's great for your skin, moisturizer, and you can even shave your legs with right, it. Right. Exactly. exactly. And then she said, no, well, there's more to it than that. And then she threw Thrust her leg out. I can't <laughs> believe that did happen. See, for the, see? For the and, record, that did not happen. And, 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 and it's like, yeah, I saw it. It was all I could do not to start licking on the, the olive oil off of her leg. Right, so, right, right. yeah, that was the most interesting thing that happened in the show, if you ask me. It's just, and the, the <laughs> that's how I'm going. The night is on just record. starting. So really, all Let's right. Well, olive oil vinegar makes me crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get the crazy. shower curtain because I was thinking of something we, got, we can do with olive oil besides shaving legs. Okay. And, and at that note, curtain. we'll bring it back to the uh, website. <laughs> so you get you. a lot of hits for the holidays, huh? Absolutely. And, and it makes a great gift. And let's face it, for people that don't drink alcohol, God bless them, uh, we, uh, we, you can send them some nice olive oil and th- it, it can be used for so many things. Correct? Yeah, we have a, um, an olive oil, extra virgin olive oil of the month club. That so one's for Dio. Are, those yeah. are very, uh, it's very popular um, this yeah. time of year. 
Is it really? Yeah, yeah. I get, I, we get a lot of purchases for that. It's a, one of those gifts that keep on giving. It certainly does. And now you've gotten some. Uh, we're in South Florida, folks. For those who are listening to us in Alaska or Australia, uh, South Florida is a very interesting place. You know, you have to go to retail for a lot of stuff that you get. Now, ha- haven't you had some good retail uh, uh, accomplishments lately? Yeah, absolutely. So the products that I import, um, I heard all about is exclusivity for the U.S. Right. So now we're in. You know, probably almost five hundred. Uh, accounts, restaurants, and retail stores throughout the country. Some of the brick and mortars, where if I wanted right. to walk in and buy your, we're in tangible. every, we're in every single fresh market. There That's is. fantastic. There's about 130. Fresh of markets, them. really. You know, I gotta say, it's a nice, and place. I will. Fresh market, I kind of like it better than a lot of the bigger stores because it's a little bit more. Uh, when you, it's a little bit more. I don't know. When you walk in there, you have a better feeling about. I like the food a little bit better that they put out. I kind of like their product a little bit better, especially with their gourmet stuff. It seems like a little bit more attention to detail. Yeah. What do you think? I, I, I love I love Fresh Market. Yeah. There's not as many of them, and they could use a few more, yeah. but uh, and, overall. And one of my favorite uh, local um, retail stores that's really great for the foodie yeah. is Thousand Pound Egg in Fort Lauderdale. They have all my products do a great job. And I'm okay, I'm going gonna, gonna to show my naivete have here. Have you been there? I don't know that place. Thousand Pound Egg. Tell that's us cool all name, about right? it. It sounds extremely interesting. So it's just food products. Where in Fort Lauderdale? What manners? Uh, Victoria Park. Okay, close enough. On the uh, northeast uh, northeast corner of Victoria Park, near near the Bend and Sunrise and US One. Wow, that's fantastic! Yeah, Thousand Pound Egg. and they're uh, they're showcasing your whole line. Yeah, they do. Everything. They're actually because um, the owner runs the store on a day to day to day basis, so right. she hand samples all the products. So they're she's, they're one of my top sellers of products. That's amazing. Yeah. That's fantastic. And we do a lot of events there like uh, I do cocktail and olive oil workshops there. So tell me so tell me about your cocktail and olive oil workshops. I mean are you making kind of some of the stuff that you're making tonight? Absolutely. So I did a few months ago we did an olive oil education workshop right. where people got to come in and listen to me talk and I'm not sure why they didn't want to do that. But it oh, was fun. you're so interesting and beautiful. And we thank you. We went through a flight of olive oils and uh, it was very educational. It's a lot of fun. Um, probably in January we're gonna do a vinegar cocktail workshop similar to this where everyone will actually get to make them hands on. Wow. So um, stay posted to my website and I Heart Olive Oil. I Heart Olive Oil dot com for that information. Yeah. And t- okay, so let's talk a little bit about vinegar. Now, what are some of the differences in the vinegars we have here tonight? Some of the basic aspects of vinegar that people at home don't know. And teach me too, because as much as I love vinegar, I like that nice syrupy balsamic and whatnot, but I don't really know too much other than that. I'll be I'm gonna be honest with you. That's why I have the pro here. Well, uh, these vinegars, they're yeah. a wine vinegars. They're okay. from Stellenbosch. Okay. Uh, they're just four different. Stellenbosch, South Africa. Stellenbosch, South, South, South Africa. South Africa. Yeah. Um, a small family farm, great, great products. Um, One of the most biodiverse regions in the world. Yeah. And, and uh, eco friendly. Yeah, the, the farm is fully sustainable. They grow, so they make all of their wine and all their organic wine without any chemicals. Without any chemicals to yeah. make the vinegar. Yeah. So uh, they actually, it's a really interesting story. The. Um, the Rosendahl uh, farm, they were making this wine in the 1980s. Some of their barrels of wine, mm-hmm. like you were saying before, turned into vinegar by accident. Right. And they're like, oh, we're on, like, this is like a pleasant surprise. Absolutely. And they started experimenting and, and doing different um, botanicals, uh, macerating with them, and then um, maturing them. Now, let me ask you, do they blend vinegars? Older ones, kind of like Solera method, uh, as yeah. they do with alcohol? Yeah, these are, so these are a mature 12 years, but it's done using the Solera system. Solera system. Yes. So the, fo- the folks at home that do not know, if you have a batch of, of a product that you've made that year, you've yielded all your fruit, and you've macerated it, crushed it, let it produce, and then you have your vinegar juice, you would hold on to what has not been sold. Okay. Macerate and crush mean the same thing. Yeah, I okay. think so. Sorry. And then uh, macerate's just more fancy. It's just more fancy. I don't want to be fancy. Macerate You're is so fancy. <coughs> actually crushed but on its own weight. Oh, yeah. On its own weight, so they're very soft. Oh. Yes, if you crush under your own weight, then there's very soft aspects of the fruit mm-hmm. that can really. Now I'm out. smarter if you and too quickly. Clear. Then you're not going to get all those wonderful attributes. <coughs> it's in the naturally skins. bruised. We yeah. have passed the 15 minute mark. Uh, we need drinks. All right, yeah, yeah. yeah we, have, okay. we sound a siren or something. All right, so I'll tell you what, Dio. Grab a bottle of something. What do you got? Alcohol? Do you Perfect. want to start with the Prosecco? Yes. One? Okay. Yes. Let's do a Prosecco. Would you gentlemen like to hand me your glasses? Are you going to do this yes, one? Yes, please. Okay. You want a bigger thing to make one and then you can pour into all glasses? I well, think this is easy because it's just like a, uh, okay, let's do it's it. like a mimosa style. Right. So, so as she's making drinks, let me just talk a little bit about Solera Method for you at home that do not know. The Solera Method is basically you have your main batch and then out of your main batch, you pour a little bit into the front batch and then you fill it. With a newer batch. What's this a batch of? A batch consists of any type of alcohol or, let's say, vinegar. 
okay. that you have. Let's say you've already sold, but you have a reserve batch, okay. right? And then as you pour off your reserve batch into a newer batch, Ooh. then you fill it with the fresher batch. So you're always keeping a little bit of the old and adding a little bit of the new. And why so would I want to do that? Because they blend over the years, and they can form a consistency of the product. And therefore, you have a really great product that's always in your master batch, Let me just which say is a little old, a little new. Yeah. Now, I know they so do that with, like with yeast. Bucket. That was, I was just pointing at the, the microphone. Mic, yeah, the so smell of vinegar like is wafting through the air. But that is, that's it's good though. All right, so you, what do we do got? Do you guys want to taste the vinegar by itself before I do. we add the prosecco? Absolutely. Okay. All right, so give me some notes. This is exceptional. I think this is wonderful. I'm a huge so vinegar take, fan. Just take a little baby sip and yeah. let it um, let it sit in your mouth. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, the smell. Um, let it like, save your, your mouth will start to salivate and just I'm really enjoy really those aromatics. This reminds me of Christmas. I don't know why. It smells cidery already. Mm, what flavor is God, this? God, that is good. This is lavender. I love vinegar. Let me tell you something, folks. You might think we're crazy, but we're cutting edge. And you'd be right. And I'll tell you what. The reason we are so cutting edge is because... Well, it does taste pretty good. All over the world for th for hundreds of years, Just people have taste. let their alcohol, including wine and beer, get to the point to where Zing. it is vinegar style and then they mix the vinegar with it with the milder and they give you a little bit of a sourness that sourness can act as a balance to the sweetness or like the malt same way as a hops does okay all right it's a basic concept that is throughout the the uh the alcohol world that many people uh, um utilize over in europe and it's it's coming to america and you better give it the program Thank you, all right so um mm. This is one of my favorite. That's some good shit. This is one nope. of my favorite lavender vinegars. Good stuff. Good stuff. Good stuff. Um, because it's Beep. it's the perfect amount of lavender. It's not like overpowering. It's very subtle. But uh, it's such a sweet, lovely vinegar. I was pleasantly surprised. This is really nice. <laughs> and and what happens is, look at the beautiful. Because uh, some of us like tart. I mean, I just like vinegar. I like oil and vinegar on my salad. But if you balance, if you I balance, I love oil and vinegar on my salad. Seriously. Wait, wait. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, salute. Cheers. 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 Merry Christmas, Christmas everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, have, Christmas. This is great. This is great. Yeah. Salute. Yo. This is fantastic. So what you're doing here is you're balancing that aceto. So I, I call this my mimosa style um, Come on, vinegar no, that's good. cocktail. No, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And Very the reason good. it's good up, is because yeah. it balances the sweetness with a nice little bit of mm -hmm. tartness. Yeah, it it's does. It's amazing. It I also like to sometimes put it on... A sprig of rosemary or thyme in there. You get that like so when you smell it, you get that you know herbaceous, yeah, herbaceous. a nose to it. It's very nice. Did you make that word up? Sprig or no. herbaceous? I wish Her I did. Herbaceous. A little bit of rhubarb. If I can make up words like, like herbaceous, like I'd be really curvaceous. If you add some rhubarb, you got a shrub right there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of the recipes right here. I'm sorry. A shrub. If you add some rhubarb, we oh, really should be making a shrub. Oh, a shrub. <laughs> I trim mushrooms. Anyway, that's, that's what good. I heard. That's what you trim said. with olive oil? <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know. My chicken berries? <laughs> uh, I do. Try, I trim it with olive oil. <laughs> yeah, this is fantastic. Is this, is this rated show rated? It's rated G for general. Yeah, audience. this is a family show. <laughs> Manson family. Seriously, though, no, family, <laughs> family could listen to this show. We don't really swear. We only get hammered on the air every Thursday. Other good than that. Good influences. <laughs> yes. I think we're pretty clean, actually. <laughs> uh, I don't think that, you know. <laughs> no, it's very uh, unique. It's unique. I, I think the next time I do the show, if you guys have me back, you should... You're always you welcome if. back. Are you kidding me? You should send a car to pick me up so I can drink more. So I can. We'll send you a car. Where do you live? Don't tell George where you live. I'll, I'm just I'll send a limo. I'll send a limo and I say it's the uh, one with the uh, short skirt and the really tan, nice legs. And if that's not what you see, just keep on driving. <laughs> oh. yeah, tan legs not gonna happen. Yeah, tan, not tan. You didn't Ten. say I said, ten. I said tan. You said oh, ten. No, you. I said tan. I said tan. Okay. I said tan. Then we're on the same page. You don't tan your legs. Tan. <laughs> That's, that, those aren't the legs I remember. Uh oh, they're coming for us. They're coming for us. Yeah, they want our vinegar. It would, it would happen eventually. This is exceptional. I'll tell you what we're going to do. We are going to take a break, but when we come back, we're going to talk about all the other aspects of uh, vinegar, cocktails, and uh, all the things you can mix it with. I brought some really unbelievable cider, and we have some wonderful uh, vodka. We're going to try it all. We're going to get crazy. We're going to get funky like we always do uh, when we have uh, wonderful guests like Beth in on uh, Buy the Glass Show on SoFloRadio.com. Are you online? Well, I don't go in for that computer stuff. Then we're not interested in you. SoFloRadio.com. 
Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with key information solutions, providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology. Preventative maintenance and networking support, hardware and custom built computers. Let key information solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly, monthly, or annual rates to fit anyone's budget. Call Key Information Solutions now. 954-973-3374. That's 954-973-3374. Or visit keyinformation.com. When you're ready to actually lose weight safely and steadily while being monitored by a physician, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson is there for you. The family medicine practice was established by her father in 1956 and continues as a medical practice that now specializes in weight reduction. Dr. Kim Jacobson joined the practice 20 years ago as both a family medicine practitioner and weight loss specialist. The weight loss clinic utilizes a combination of appetite suppression medication and vitamins to produce great results, usually three to four pounds per week for most patients. Now you can change your lifestyle while still enjoying your own food, just less of it. They offer a choice of two, three, or four week plans. So whether you just need to lose a few pounds or a lot, the weight loss clinic of Dr. Kim Jacobson can help you. They're located at 5454 Northeast 4th Avenue in Miami, just two blocks west of 54th Street and Biscayne Boulevard. Call them at 305-751-0091. They'll be happy to answer any and all of your questions. That's 305-751-0091. Get started on a beautiful new body today with Dr. Kim Jacobson and the weight loss clinic. Hi, this is George. You know, trying to get laid all day makes me hungry, so I go to Power Smoothie in Aventura and get the healthiest wraps and most delicious smoothies ever made. I mean, really. The smoothies are so insanely delicious, they're orgasmic. The staff is friendly there and cute. The food is healthy and real, not processed. This is not fast food. It's good food served fast. And they love me there. They even let me create my own smoothie, the Malted Jorge. Go in and ask for one. They're in the promenade shops right off of US 1 in Aventura. Or call them at 305-792-5338. You can also visit them online at powersmoothieaventura.com. Hey, this is Natalie's from the Sports Head Show. Log on to SoFloRadio.com every Sunday and Tuesday to hear the best in sports. And remember to follow us on Twitter at Edge and the Heads. Sunday's show is a little different. The Heads cover current events, sports, and me, Natalie Jimenez, discuss the hottest news in entertainment. And for those who want strictly sports, the Tuesday show is just for you. Remember to listen to us on Sundays from 8 to 10 and Tuesdays from 7 to 9. John Etch and the Sports Heads, only on SoFloRadio.com. And now we return you to By the Glass. Hey everybody, welcome back to By the Glass. We got the wonderful Beth Sadowski in the house today, and we're trying all kinds of really crazy and wild a wonderful beer. collection of vinegars. Yeah, a wonderful collection of vinegars. And, you know, an interesting and wild uh, show we have for you this evening because we're trying something new, and did I say cutting edge? Uh, because vinegars, cocktails, or shrubs, as Jason has so kindly pointed out to me, Can we talk about the shrubs? are not just the plants in front of your house anymore. They are the drinks in front of your face. Oh, oh, oh. boom, bam. I, I have a rim shot here somewhere. But, uh, yeah, Why are they called uh, shrubs? Does anybody know? Shrubs. Uh, because Jason's been reading up all about it. Uh, so I'm, I'm asking I didn't you. read that part. Why don't you put that in your Google and search it? Please, ask the magical so Google ball that knows all. So but, uh, shrubs do date back, what, what is it, to the 1800s? 1800s. 1800s. Yeah. 1800s. So uh, technically, it's, it's a, um, a fruit, a sugar, and a vinegar macerated together, and that makes a shrub. Okay, so yeah, that's cool. Before that, a fruit, a sugar, and a vinegar. Just medicinal mm-hmm. cordials. cordials. Oh, they're just medicinal. It's kind of like everything else, like gin. Yeah. Good medicine, that gin. Yeah, it is. Absolutely. It's good for what it's not really say yeah. how it got its name. I, you know, here's the thing, and I really want to mix some of these with rum or whiskey, and I know we got some left over. But that, though, that, that but cheese over there is Wikipedia says good it, it's uh, become popular again in 2011 and 2012. Do you mind if you uh, make a Triscuit with some cheese for all of us? We're going to try and do a food pairing. I think that one aspect I really want to talk about tonight is pairing these cocktails with food. Beth, what do you think? What have you done? What do you, what do you think? Obviously, cheese. Perfect. Oh, uh, well, these cocktails, you know, depending on the flavor of the cocktail, they make can right. be paired with any food. For example, some of the 
food items I like to use the vinegars for. Yeah. Um, I reduce them down, drizzle right. them over some ice cream. Oh, wow. And Or as a jam and spread it on some so, cheese and crackers. So basically the fact that the sweet complements the uh, the creaminess. Yes. For, first of all, the acidic aspect of the of the drink mm-hmm. will scour your mouth of the cream and fat. Exactly. Right? And give you a nice right. mouthfeel contrast. I have right. homemade huckleberry jelly. From Montana, mm-hmm. hand picked and made. It looks like it's pro- derived. I'll, I'll be your huckleberry. Derived. From, <laughs> uh, shrub is derived from the Arab, uh, Arabic ro- word sharab. Oh, oh really? That's funny. Mean to drink. Oh, all right. Interesting. That's very interesting. All right, so I have a uh, a bowl of triscuits here. The vinegar is also really good for pickling. Oh, so talk to me about pickles. Have you made some pickles with this kind of stuff? I have. So, you, you know, you can take um, a jalapeno or any, any vegetables or anything you want to pickle mm-hmm. and let it sit in the vinegar and it, it pickles itself. Really? Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what you did with the uh, the one in front of us there. Absolutely. So I'm um, giving everybody a little spooge of cheese on there. Cheese. I cannot tell you when <laughs> last time I had, what do you awesome. call this? Spooge. 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 It is It's turn. squeeze cheese. There you go. Yes, I haven't cheese. had that probably since I, haven't I had was this in forever, but yeah. I'm looking forward to eating it. To tell you the truth, so many chemicals so in that. I, my almost, body. I almost want to pour some vinegar on it. To, uh, well, we're gonna. Well, here's what. Here's the concept, um, uh, guys, because we can't all talk and eat at the same time. Right. As you guys eat and drink your vinegar, tell me what you're thinking about it as I eat and drink mine. So right now, George and Jason are eating their spooge oh. cheese with the Triscuit, and they're trying their vinegar-based cocktail with it. And this is what we really want to happen at home, folks. And everybody else, if you want to try this now, too, get your spooge out and uh, if, and drink it down with some vinegar. He said and, spooge. Yeah. <laughs> and tell me what you think. I mean, this is what it's all about. Now, remember that these things are greater than the, than the sum of their parts. The whole That's, aspect of this. It's good. Food. I'm glad I got the sharp. Maybe it's all because it's the only squeeze cheese that was in CVS. Yes, yeah, but I, I, it makes me want to have some bacon now. With mm. this. Maybe some smoked cheese. Mm, yeah, some nice smoked smoke cheese. cheese and bacon <clears throat> mm-hmm. on top of a cracker. Well, I must say. It definitely... Can uh, I chew mm-hmm. in the microphone? Mm-hmm. Yes, please, sure, please do. Thank you. Actually, I got to tell you, this ex- brought this drink to a whole other level. Better ratings. How's it like 10 times more? I'm yeah. serious, folks. Yeah, definitely. I'm able to gulp it now. I'm serious. I just did. The cheese, all of those creamy notes in the cheese really kind of took off the sharpness at the end of the vinegar. And all we got was that real sweet grape note that has been like basically broken down into its truest form. And uh, with the wonderful carbonation that comes from the Prosecco, it cleaned our mouth. It really scoured it and uh, gave us just so – it's kind of like that ginger sushi aspect, mm-hmm. something that cleanses your palate. This is perfect for that. I mean, this is something that if – seriously, you guys – if you take this to a party at one of your Christmas parties, you're going to blow their mind. I mean, you're going to blow their mind. It's Seriously. pretty awesome. You can go out, go to iHeart Olive Oil, find out where Beth is, find out where you buy her perfect products. Stalk her. Find like me. Like I do. Stalk her like George. Yep. Make sure you have a razor and a bottle of olive oil in one Got, hand. Um, and, and basically, and a seriously, a bottle, bottle of ether and a <laughs> handkerchief in the other hand. <laughs> a bottle of ether and a rag. Yeah. <laughs> please, oh, don't, right. please don't give my stalkers any good ideas. <laughs> 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 and get some funky ideas for your friends when you go to these holiday parties. I mean, it's pleasantly surprising. People are like, "What vinegars? No way!" And I, I honestly, a few times, I have to force people to try it. Then they're like, "Thank you so much for making me try these. These are the best things I've ever had." Seriously, yeah, it's, it's they great. Love it. Yeah, but, uh, folks at home, let's face it. Food is all about contrast. Food is about compliment. Food is about different balancing aspects. When you want to eat something, it's not just about the way it tastes. It's about the mouthfeel. It's the way it is in your mouth. Proceed. If you have something greasy or something big and fatty, what do you want? You want something that's going to scour that and clean your palate so that you can eat something else. When you have something that's spicy, what do you want? You want something sweet so it can quench the heat. You want something that's going to work together in your mouth. These are very simple concepts that work very well. Vinegar is an aceto type of aspect. It gives you a nice astringency. What does that work well against? It works well against fat. It works well against uh, malt and sweet. It works well to balance a lot of aspects these things they can work in perfect harmony and this is a beautiful wonderful way to really experience one of these wonderful uh products in nature like a, like a really good vinegar in a whole nother way that, that no one's doing right now and and to get out there in forefront and to really enjoy it i think that you're really gonna have a wonderful time this this uh, holiday right absolutely absolutely so as we're moving right along let's get it let's go a little bit more hardcore i want some a hard uh, hard whiskey or something right what do we got we got vodka flavored vodka Either Te- tequila, tequila or vodka, but this says whiskey or, or rum. Do oh. we have any either one of those? I have a good vinegar to pair it to whiskey. I have some br- rum in the upside down carousel. Let's grab the rum. Party white. Let's Let's grab you're the you're rum. not going to bring it out of there. You got to use it there. That's fine. Just fill a glass. Here. Fill a glass with some rum because rum's a little sweet, and even though it's white rum, that's fine. 
I just want the alcohol. Here's what I want to to understand next. I want to understand how the sweet alcohol, like a rum, can balance with the really good vinegar. Now, what was the vinegar we just tried? Uh, the lavender vinegar. Okay, now how does that differ from, from some of these other ones you have? So, uh, for the rum one, uh, depending on the rum, but I would probably recommend um, the Finbos. Okay, now what and, is that? And how now you're probably wondering, well, what is Finbos, yeah. Beth? What is that? Please, Beth, tell us what Finbos is. I'm so, begging you. So, fin- <laughs> Beg some more, please. Oh, please, <laughs> Beth. Please wear a skirt next time. I mean, tell us what Finbos is. <laughs> Finbos mm. is um, an herb or bush that's very indigenous to South Africa. Uh, very similar to the Robos plant. And it, do you guys know what Robos is? Kind of. I like know Robos tea. cop, but I don't know Robos plant. Ro- 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 Robos. Ro- ro- your boss. Are, uh, how quick are you, Jason? Robos. Jason's quick. Robo's know, Robo's 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 I don't even want to know. I just tried to come up do, when I do started not ask typing me how to spell it. I'm a Robo's cop. Um, this one is also <laughs> macerated with uh, buchu, honey bush tea, rose geranium, wild olive, I think wild <laughs> rosemary. I recognize two of those ingredients, but they sound really good. <laughs> yes, exactly. Buchu, oh, My antlers don't want to stay on. Yeah, your antlers don't want to stay on? Mine won't come off. There you go. They're stuck like glue. How do you spell that? Finbos, uh, F-Y-N-B-O-S. Oh. Boutros Cali, yes. Anyway, so we got another Boutros, right? Boutros? Oh, yeah. Is one of the, uh, is the name of the actual thing. So that we're going to make a drink here, and we're using some rum. I wanted to use some whiskey or rum, which is what we're doing. But yeah, you don't have to go. You can just make one, and then we can all taste it. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's a, all right. because basically I wanted to accent all right. it. Now, are we going to pour a little? <laughs> I, really know. I really hate that idea. Are we going to... T- <laughs> Are we going to pour a little of this? The worst idea I've heard all day. Well, I want to save that for my tequila one, <laughs> but we can, we can double well, it next. if you want to use it again. No, 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 right. no, no. Okay. We don't need to do that. we got plenty of stuff to go on here. All right, so the Boutros is, is, is definitely a, a shrub that grows in South Africa. Ooh, and I got a good Finbos. 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 I don't care what he says. I want my own. No, this is nice. This is beautiful. There needs to be some rum. Folks, you, you, you yeah, have no good. idea what it's like to actually smell these vinegars Thank and, you, and the concept of alcohol. Hey, I got shafted. And, uh, and I got, to think that I got these, you, Jason. You know, that these oh, will actually... So sweet. These are, <laughs> there you go. Dio, you're allowed to walk around. What this does is this so takes we're drinking this, this like this? Yeah. It's just rum and vinegar? Yeah. We're straight gonna, up? Yep. Yeah, rum and vinegar straight up. And Jason, what did th- you just do with the Prosecco? Same thing, right? Yeah. But well, then when you taste it, it tastes a little bit, it tastes different. Right. It's something that you Why I like I'm this. I'm trusting you guys because you have antlers on. Dude, oh this my God, is it's very so good. good. Boy, this is good. This is. I'm not good. just saying it because they're my products. Why do I feel like this is going to be really Does good for cut, my kidneys? Doesn't it cut the it heat is. of the and rum? Maybe away? my urethra. Oh this yeah, is, yeah. It cuts the heat of the rum and all of that and all of the uh, sweetness. Yeah, a little, rum. little but, part for me. Why are your eyes watering? Mm, maybe yeah. too much vinegar. Why you putting too much vinegar? Did the dog die? Jason, here. I tell you what. Now try it with a cheese snack. Let me try it. Seriously, because you know what's cool about the food is, is the food cuts. The aspect of the vinegar that's not fruity. It cuts the aspect. Can you make mine with a little face on it? I, I certainly can. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that's very nice. It's very cute smiley face. Yeah, there. I'm making a little smile. You smiley get the smiley face, face yeah. pancakes at Denny's too. When you all, all the time. When I, put chocolate, when I make pancakes, I put chocolate chips in them. There you go. They're adorable. Thanks for Beth. Can you guys see that? Yeah, absolutely. Aww. And then Isn't that cute? Aww. Aww. Yeah. Now, the interesting eat thing it, about it is... Eat it fast. Ah! Anything creamy <laughs> or, or t- cheese or anything will cut the acid... A little bit and lets you taste the fruitiness of this, and then you know wow. it works so well with the spirit. I think I got a little too much vinegar in mine. I'll have to be honest. Probably. Yeah, she. I think me. maybe you need some more rum in your cup. Yeah, put a little rum in there. You know what else works okay. good? Rum. Really cut it down. Yeah, prosecco. There we go. I have a little prosecco on mine. Oh, we got a shrub going now. Here. Oh. You know why this works good? Because you need that kind of carbonation to add to the mouthfeel. That's perfect. Seriously, if you take a nice spirit, break it down with the vinegar. To give it a little bit of a balance, because what's going to happen is it's going to, it's going to. First of all, it cuts through the alcohol, right, Jason? It, you don't oh, taste yeah. any alcohol burn from the rum. Oh, not at all. No, it cuts right, right through that. And then what happens is, all I'm tasting is vinegar. Well, <laughs> you taste the vinegar because it's a nice balance, but then you can you pour a little prosecco in there. It gives you that that carbonation oh, yeah, you're that's looking a, for. That's I have a, really a feeling you're like a pink cocktail type person. You like your drinks very sweet. Like, no, 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 no. Not a whiskey or scotch drinker. No, I no, drink whiskey. whiskey. All right. yeah. No, I mean, uh, and I and I love balsamic vinegar. I have it oil and vinegar on my salad every time, and this is good. Don't get me wrong; it was just uh, a pinch too much vinegar. I think. I got a little well, yeah, head. everybody has to drink the taste, like we do here. Well, by the last. there's one thing you guys I would recommend for everyone trying to make their own vinegar cocktails at home. Right. And as a chef, I say this when you're making your food. Yeah. 
start small. You can always add more. It's hard to take out. Now, is that how you got into the business? Are you a chef? Did you go to Johnson & Wales to get your education? I did go to Johnson & Wales. I went there for culinary arts. So oh, my background fantastic. is... So talk to me a little bit about that. Let's talk about your cooking background, Where, if, if you don't mind. Places yeah, you've worked. I love to what, talk about myself. What do, you like to, what do you like to make? And talk to me about... Because, you know, I'd like to think that By the Glass is kind of turning into a foodie as much as a beverage show. And I'd like to showcase restaurants. I like to showcase chefs like yourself. And I really appreciate you being here because this brings me into the next level. This brings our whole show into the next level because we really want to um, bridge the gap between beverages and and food and everything because they're really a wonderful world that work well together. So, so what would you like to know? I'd like yeah, to know. Well, just give me <laughs> some. And she forgot the question. Yeah, yeah, the question. Yeah, yeah, like oh, okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Where should I that start? That was a long question. <laughs> no, I talk for a living. <laughs> but uh, anyway, so <clears throat> just tell me a little bit about yourself and your experiences in the chef world, kind of where you worked, some of your experiences. Give, give me some insight. So, yeah, I'll, I'll give you a quick overview. Um, yeah. So I started out my career as a chef, you know, Thought I was gonna um, own my own restaurant one day and right. be uh, like next Maybe Emerald Gossi, and I, I I still may, but I say it's gonna be I'm gonna be famous soon, but I'm not gonna own my restaurant until after I make my millions, which will be soon. And then we can say we had Beth <laughs> on bottom glass right. before she was famous when so, she was poor after she was on <laughs> exactly. Oprah. Exactly. Um, so I've I've had the opportunity to um, work in. A lot of um, nice restaurants. I was a sous chef for a catering you mind company. Mind dropping here. a name? Um, I worked for. Do you, do you guys remember Marks? Yeah, I, and Ross Mar- Ollis, uh, uh, the Mar- big Marks, Mark, Mark oh, Meltello. Yeah. Uh, yes, yes. He. I was a lead line cook there. Okay. Uh, I won't mention the date because it was over a decade ago, and it dates wow. me. Um, I worked for a small catering company down here as a sous chef, and then I moved into the front of the house, and I, I worked for restaurants like Outback as a okay. supervisor, bartender. I worked for Marriott as their, um, and then I moved into the That's beverage a tough world. business, Marriott. I mean, those the hospitality, like it's specifically for yeah. like, you know those types of places. It's a little bit tougher than like the you know the. Right, I mean, it's like it's demanding. It, working in a, in a hotel because it's twenty four seven, it's yeah. very demanding. And I was lucky enough where I ran, um, I, I did all the purchasing for the beverages and for our entire property. But when you seem like the kind of person I would have loved to have worked with, I would have walked in with my wine portfolio, sat down with Beth, <laughs> and said, "This is what I got that's good this week," and she would have said, "Oh, Brett, just send it all in." Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I, that, I, I gotta, love it. I got a deal for you, and here's a bottle of vodka. All right, I'll take whatever yeah, you, yeah, whatever you guys, got. Here's a bottle of vodka. Yeah, that's how I used to work. I used to love yeah. it. <laughs> Fantastic. It's, it's interesting, and you know, it, it really takes that type of background, that type of experience, those years in the market, to be able to go out on a basis of what it is that you want to do. And I, I love that you're, you know, excelling with your iHeart Olive Oil, and that you've taken the time, to, you know, to believe in yourself to put out a product like that, to be an importer. It's not easy. I can't imagine that uh, what you're doing is, is easy, especially in this world, very competitive, high edge, especially in a market like South Florida. Yeah, there's a lot of consumers out there, but there's also a lot of competition, right? It's very, very competitive. It takes um, a lot of chutzpah to uh, start your own business these days. It certainly does. Now, talk to me a little bit about, I mean, you got to go out and get the work yourself. Is there any way that you could like, a lot of food distributors like Gordon Food Service or Cisco, would they carry your product and sell it for you? How does that work? Um, so I do. So because I, I'm the exclusive importer for these products, I um, I work with distributors around the country. They're typically more specialty, high end. That's good. Um, I work with, you know, the, the smaller distributors that handle the high end products and cater to the high end retailers and, and the so white you know, tablecloth restaurants. That's yeah. Out these days yeah these they're very specialty items and i find they typically i love the the bigger distributors that you know everything has a need but um they yeah. t- tend to get lost in our portfolio no, you do you get lost uh when it comes out i mean have you ever seen these guys from cisco's book it's ridiculous i mean literally they sell off a book that's like yeah six or seven inches thick no, like, no. My, my next goal is ridiculous. to get these into a, a, a large beverage dist- distributor oh. because they can be used for cocktails no, absolutely. And uh, if you guys thi- any connections? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the thing is, is that you, the problem that I would foresee for you right off the bat is that having you'd have to have a wine distributor because they would have to know right aspects of selling it. And the thing is, is that you know, there's a lot of talented people in the wine and spirit world, but the problem is, is they don't think outside the box. And and you know, the thing is, is that uh, uh, somewhere like something like by the glass, I really I'm proud of the fact that we are all about everything in between, and that's like a term that I really take to heart because there's so much really great stuff going out there that is is what's interesting and what's in between the fold. You got to get out. I had no it. idea people drank vinegar. Yeah. Well, and the fact of the matter is. So last that, time you came on, I mean. Right. Because you haven't been around since the 1800s. Exactly. exactly. And you know why they drank it in the 1800s? Because they drank beer and wine that was soured. Because well, it was, Not because it was soured on purpose. They had to it's preserve because it. They, 
let, check this out. They couldn't store it correctly, and it turned sour on its own. And guess what? They drank so much sour beer that they te- they started to like it. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And then once they started to like it, then they started to produce it. Now, if you go to the region of Belgium where they make Lambique, there's uh, there's three types of uh, – let me show off a little bit here. Yeah. There's so, three types of uh, yeasts that are, that are, are you know, souring. You know, the Britannomyces yeast, the Britannomyces bruxellensis, Britannomyces lambiscus. I'm sorry, Lim- yeah, Limbiscus and the Brettanomyces clausi all give you a very nice souring aspect that would turn into a vinegar note, a cetobacteria. These are things that they look for. As a matter of fact, in the modern day lambic world where they make these lambics, the guza and all types of beers, they are scared that they don't have enough bacteria to turn their beer sour because they have these old holding tanks. And they do not have the old concepts of the fact of the matter is with there was orchards out the door about 1800s that actually had these wild spontaneous yeast that would float through the air and turn things sour. That doesn't happen anymore because outside the door now is a highway. So they're really trying to look for these old world concepts. So they have to kind of make their beers taste the way they used to 100 years ago by modern methods. So to actually have something like vinegar that fairly simple to turn into that type of souring that you want. I mean, that's the basis of the, of the whole concept of vinegar is the fact that it is soured. Mm-hmm. It's oxidized. So in order to actually make a product like this and then make your beverage sour with it, right? that kind of defeats the whole purpose of souring your beverage. You, you understand where I'm exactly, going here? Yeah. Let's Why make a sour beer when you can just take a beer and add some souring to it? Right. If that's what you sure. like to drink. There you go. More, op- serious. more options. Yeah. And it's something that's, as, as a mixologist, if you're working in a place where you're selling... Uh, Rodenbach Grand Cru, you're selling the brewery, uh, it has a wonderful souring aspect. You're selling all kinds of different Flanders, Reds, and whatnot. The, you know, basically, what can happen here is you can sour some beers with these wonderful drinks without having to worry about it. So I just think it's amazing. So we're passing around all kinds of stuff here. Talk to me. Let's get a little bit into the shriveled guy in, in the, uh, and I'm not talking about George, the shriveled guy over there. <laughs> in the, the, uh, the shriveled jalapeno syrup. Yeah, so let's I w- talk about that. I was hoping I could make one, one more cocktail Do whatever for you, you want. Is that Please. okay? Of course. Um, no. So we're going to do, um, this is, um, we're going to mix the hibiscus vinegar, mm. which also has elderflower, vanilla bean. I think I remember that. Rosa. What's an elder for? Oh. <laughs> do you guys, guys want to try this vinegar just by itself? Absolutely. Absolutely. So pass it around in your little snifters here. That's an elder for Jorge. Do you ever say that you're full of piss and vinegar? <laughs> I try not to. It's not very ladylike. Oh, uh, that's hilarious. Jason made it funny. Mm, it's yummy and sweet. So uh, this is a little sweeter. This is um, I, probably one of the sweeter ones because it's got the vanilla baby sips and let it sit in your mouth. Jason's gulping. <laughs> I, I just said, wow, that was a sip. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So what we're going to do next, that I'll take your sweet. glasses back, gentlemen. Yes, Mm. Wow. So if you want to comment put, on the, the alcohol in I, mean, I need a salad. I like it. I, you know what, though? It's fruity Next time notes. she's here, I'm bringing a salad. I'm getting fruit. Tequila, please. I get strawberries Silver, and raspberries. There's a lot of fruity aspects because, remember, it was once a fruit uh, juice that was oxidized to turn into this vinegar. So there's a lot of that concept that shines. Now, that vinegar is made from what, grape, uh, grapes? So- uh, I, I missed the question. There was once fruit that was oxidized to turn into this vinegar. I mean, that's where it started from. So you're going to get a lot of those fruity notes from the it, actual. Exactly. It was. It was. It's a wine vinegar. Right, it's so actually it's made um, out of grapes, right? It's a Bordeaux style hey. uh, wine. Oh, vinegar. Wow. So we got Cabernet. We got the Merlot. We got Cab Franc. We got that Perthite Verdot, and we have Malbec. That's your classic Bordeaux blend. Just for you at home that didn't know. I didn't. George I didn't know. know. George knew. I had no idea. He knew. Come on. Okay. All right. No, I so have, I have pictures next time you want to do that. Little pictures. Little Stop. pictures of you, Dio, doing weird things. No. Every way to get alcohol into your body, George has. That's right. So, um, Hypodermic needle. <laughs> so what I'm, uh, what I'm making here, if you'd be so kind to open that for I would, me. I would be so kind. If you want to get that little effect of the... You want this to just blow up in my face, right? I'm I did shake it. I, I shook it all about, you know, before I came in here. <laughs> shake it all about. There we go. So this is um, a tequila uh, hibiscus cocktail that I, I created. So I spent my Saturday... Uh, last Saturday, like around eleven in the morning, making cocktails just for fun. Beautiful, and I, um, I did have to take a nap. George, a fun that. person. <laughs> George did that too, but he was still yeah. up from the night last before. night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> um. So what this is? It's um. We have the hibiscus vinegar, which is very sweet in nature. Um. Then we've got the jalapeno simple syrup I made, very spicy to balance it out. So you I, add that in here, right? Yeah, I just added it in there, and I like to use um a really nice silver uh, tequila. Um, it's got a nice, clean, crisp flavor. Silver means it's been aged for at least three months. We folks. have some, don't we? A plata. Just pour it. Oh. Yeah, we that's, what we, that's what we're using. A plata. 
I miss everything. That's okay. Get with the program. I know. And then um, uh, the last ingredient I'm adding is a blood orange soda. So technically, this is a shrub. Yes, we technically. Got fruit, we have yeah. Yeah, 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 there sugar. we go. Yeah, baby. Hmm. And um, so this is a... Uh, Hmm. My take on a very yummy margarita. I gotta tell you. Oh, so this yeah. tastes like a margarita, huh? This is yummy. Man, that smells vinegar like a margarita. margarita. A salute. I never thought Beth. I would see the here's day. Here's to Beth, everybody. Let's give Woo! her a round Thank of applause. You. Yay. Yay. Beth Sadowski, you know, thanks for coming in and making a wonderful, wonderful drink. This is amazing. And it's a beautiful color. I mean, yeah, it is. Yeah. You, you can't go wrong with blood orange. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah, you don't even taste the vinegar. That's exceptional. And you know what? <laughs> the uh, the vinegar just adds to, to the overall. Yeah, because it gives you an acid that that's naturally yeah. occurring. It's very clean. It's not it's also, bad. They're very. But um, this is amazing. They're very clean drinks. I found you when you have that acid of the vinegar. It's not like too syrupy or sugary no. or overpowering. I feel like it's kind of healthy too. I gotta say, the acid yeah, of the vinegar, very, uh, the acid of the vinegar works well with the acidic note of the orange. Mm -hmm. the, this, the, Can you uh, just pick up the jalapeno, like in the totally. back of your tongue after the jalapeno. I if do. it's not enough, um, oh, you could you could take a bite of that. No, no, no. Do you dare anyone? Right anyone? Anyone? Oh, no, no. El Paso, Texas. Um, also, the last time I took a bite of something that shriveled, I did. I just regretted it forever. <laughs> for for no, for aesthetics, usually I'll take up. I'll take a raw jalapeno. I'll slice it, make little um, round mm -hmm. uh, silvers, and I'll throw it in there. It's very. All bright. right, I'll bite it. <laughs> All right, bite, All right, the, bite the shriveled up man. I'm gonna bite the head off. Wait, wait, I gotta get a picture of this. I'm gonna know when you're ready. All right, go. Ready? Go Locked and loaded. This has gotta go. Facebook, JJ. Yeah. There you go. Perfect. Probably tasty. That huh? was a very large bite. Very, very large bite. Yeah, but they're bite. not hot. That's very yummy. I, I, those were really hot. I don't know. Are they hot? I think his, fa his face is turning red. No. Yep. <laughs> no, the flesh is... This is not something that you want to like eat the whole thing, but... <laughs> really? Like all at once, but take a, take a bite. Take a bite. It goes it goes right to a nice cruising altitude. I thought jalapenos mm. were only oh, hot. Oh, yeah, no, no. Mm -mm. Is that hot? Really? <laughs> yeah. How I many scove my, units I, or whatever? I barely stuck my tongue in there and it's really? on fire. Well, yeah. the hell I doing it? <laughs> I hear that a lot. I see a little look bit at, of sweat. Look at his neck. Is, look at his neck. is all red. <laughs> <laughs> neck, I'm a redneck. My neck's all red. He's a hick. <laughs> He's like, what? I'm hot as I'm sweating. He's like, that is going to hurt later. Holy crow. Would you like well, some vinegar to help cleanse that out of your body? It hurts going out? No, I'll take another bite of that. I gotta say, yummy. tomorrow we're all gonna pee like real clean. <laughs> yeah, does this clean out our kidneys or something? Yeah, what does it seriously. Do? Urethra. Jason's yeah. tried to beat drug tests with this stuff. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I think that was Bradley. Was it but... successful? Uh, no, it wasn't actually. <laughs> no, it's not. Are you kidding me? You can't drink vinegar. <laughs> this is amazing. I gotta say that this is definitely my favorite, the last cocktail you made. Because, seriously, folks. The orange juice or whatever it is, you know, uh, it oh, works. It's good balance. It's actually good too. Yeah, I was looking at the that. acid in that works well with the acid and the vinegar. And what it does is it leaves, it, you know, it's crisp. Mm -hmm. It adds a crisp acidity. This I mean, is that's rich a, people soda right here. It oh, it certainly is. Yeah. It's very well. It's that's very doing very, very well classy. these days. <laughs> it's very classy. It's also Italian. And it's like um, a lot of vinegar. Moi ami. Anyway, so it's crisp. And the thing is, is that it's a lot of people perceive crispness as a hop character something that's you know maybe acidic in that way mm -hmm. because hops have acid they balance malty sweetness with crisp acidity what we're doing here is we're balancing the sweetness of the uh, fruit with a crisp acidity from the actual vinegar which i find to be extremely alluring and i'm, I'm really enjoying alluring. Myself i love that word I'm, I'm, it's bringing me in it's alluring me yeah it is very it's, it's exceptional and the thing is is that it's very classy and uh you know i think that this is another thing, folks. If you buy one of these wonderful vinegars, and, and I know there's people at home saying, to, well, you know what, Brett? I would buy one if you told me the name of it. And where, so to, why get don't it. You, and where to get it. So why don't we let Beth kind of tell us a little bit. I know we can go to iHeart Olive Oil, and we can also go to... What's your favorite? Hold on. She's telling us the names and um, everything. Well, if you go to my website, iHeartOliveOilNewYork, I-H-A-R-T, OliveOil.com. I said New York. I was thinking like I Heart New York. Oh, I heart yeah. olive oil dot com. I have a list of stores throughout the country that you can get it. Brick and mortars, okay. Uh, for brick and mortar stores. What is this specific? I see. This is uh, so the brand is called Rosendahl. R -O Rosendahl. R o z e n d a l. That's not like Rosenthal, right? It's, no, Rosendahl. Sounds just like it. Okay, yeah. Except different. Yeah. 
Okay, go ahead. Um, Did they do this? Is this like a turkey? Remember when you were a kid and you used to like make a hand and then that was the turkey when you were? I'm see, sorry, I don't remember that. It does look, look like that. Yeah. yeah, you do that. You did. You did do it that. Sounds a little weird. George if you ask it, me. Right? Here, is that remember? legal? I did that. I have we a shirt like chest. that now. You remember <laughs> you used to make a hand and then the head was a turkey and the you know you know just for the record, George, I can see through your sunglasses and where you're staring. Is it your cleavage? Just for the record, they're not that dark. Is it your cleavage? Yeah. You know staring at your cleavage? I was so worried about not wearing a skirt I forgot about the cleavage <laughs> thank god thank god for that you ever, <laughs> now I know why my chair is lower awesome. now I know oh, why my I chair is lower Beth. than all of yours Beth Sadowski you <laughs> caught, uh, Beth you caught me in the mid act of being a heterosexual <laughs> really, uh, I'm going to show you the turkey <laughs> dirty heterosexual <laughs> I'm gonna, show, I'm gonna show you my turkey I don't know oh, I want to see your turkey now come on this, okay. wait here this, this is what we did in like first funny. grade did you ever do this, Beth? Because Beth says she never did this before. Beth, you got to do it. And we're going to do a lot of things with Beth that she's never done before. <laughs> I got you. <laughs> well, this is fantastic. I, I'm enjoying the uh, crap I mean, this out of this. actually Seriously. really, really good. Really, really good. You can serve so this on in Key West on the beach. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. You know, here's the thing. You is you normally drink uh, a cocktail. It doesn't have anything to balance. It yeah. gets too sweet. It cloys up, and you don't want another one. This is something that will balance the sweetness with a good aesthetic. I keep right? going back to it every time. And I'm like, oh, I want more. Because you're balanced, yeah. right? It if quenches your good, thirst. If I can give a good tip as well, this yeah. is a, a cocktail that you can actually make in a pitcher. Because there's no like muddling, it's very simple. You don't so even you can make it in a big pitcher, and you could serve like your guests at a party, and just it's That's very amazing. easy, very easy. It is. How do you like my turkey? That's pretty good. Um, interesting. George, everybody yeah. at home, did you see George's turkey? This I'm, is really good. Just for the yeah, record, I've never seen a turkey that large before. <laughs> right. Here, George, hold that up to George the camera. Right. What George, is that? Uh, wait. All right, Beth. George is a big turkey. That's right. But now, now I'm going to show you. <laughs> Can I read this? <laughs> hold on. Can I read this? This is show notes. Sure. <laughs> I don't, I don't wait, wait, secrets. <laughs> those are trade secrets. Those are show notes for tomorrow. People at home will. Now that now that I've shown you my turkey, here's my one-eared elephant. <laughs> have you ever seen one of these? No, 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 no. no, no. Oh, down, no. George. <laughs> Crossing the line. The line has been crossed. All right, all right. And watching one George more of these drinks, you'll want to see it. Yeah, wa <laughs> watching George right now, that reminds me. Do not drink and drive. Do not overconsume. <laughs> Please only drink the taste like we do on By the Glass. Drink everything responsibly. Uh, if you're under 21, do not drink. If you're if you're pregnant, wait to drink. Yeah, wait the nine months. The kid will thank you when he's old enough. And, uh, please, uh, drink my mom drink. didn't wait. Look what happened. Look what happened to George. Uh, seriously, enjoy all these wonderful things. I like to go home and drink, and then I can just pass out on the floor with my face pressed right up against the tile. I enjoy yeah, I drink it. I home do it every Saturday. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> you're both married, uh, very happily married, and drunk on Saturday night. Anyway, so. I, I just want everybody to be safe out there because it's the holidays and there's enough drunks out there that are going to kill you on the roadways. You don't need to do it to somebody else. So, And it's been such a joy to have Beth. It always is. She's such a wonderful, upbeat person who brings in her cutting-edge cocktails and her new world view, which there's just not enough of it out there. And uh, She's, always she's just crazy. She's crazy. Who else shaves their legs with olive oils and drinks vinegar? Beth Sadowski. Uh, <laughs> not, makes not drinks on Saturday time. morning. And me, since at the same time. Come on. You do right, at the same sometimes. time. <laughs> sometimes. It's, it's fantastic. And we can't help but uh, but love her on this show. She's Go check great. out our website, please. Please check out our website, I Heart Olive Oil. Is that all spelled out that way? iHeartOliveOil.com. You can get a list of retail stores to find your products if you don't want to go on the website. Guys, I'm telling you. can you. email me through the site as well. Makes a perfect gift. I'm going to order some You have some like the little oil. baskets with different olive oils and I stuff. do. And actually, there's a gift set of these four vinegars. There is? You can get like, they're little, they're like little liquor bottles and you can You're find kidding it. Yeah, me. It's perfect. Folks, you hear that? Yep. You can't find a better gift. Yep. Seriously. Not only do you can use them for salads, you can use them for, for high-end food. I mean, let's face it. This is the nice border I'm looking for. This is the bridge that I'm looking for between cocktails, beverages, and food because they all really work together. Seriously, we're you know we're eating Triscuits and, spring, and spray cheese, but and it even tastes good with, with these cocktails. Imagine if you had a nice piece of aged um, manchetto or, or a nice piece of asiago you know with a, with a nice whole you know, grain cracker uh, uh, these vinegar cocktails would accent all of that mm -hmm. absolutely perfectly as well as a, a just a bevy of other things and it's time for you to go out and do something interesting and you know and, and present it to the people that that are in your life you know look they've had the same uh, jello mold you've been making for 12 <laughs> years for the last 12 years go out there and do something fun go out there and do something interesting go to iheart olive oil get some ideas for the holidays you don't Jason. like my ambrosia salad I, I did like you know i like your ambrosia toss salad that's always oh. my favorite oh Oof. but uh seriously and you, and you guys are talking about me <laughs> <laughs> you guys don't get out much i stick to the wholesome things like cleavage and legs <laughs>
Yeah, well, most that certainly, you know, but honestly, that wasn't dirty. I don't, can we get away with that with the FCC? Yeah, yeah, the FCC has nothing to do with us. She's no, got great. Well, I know that, but I'm saying even toss salad, you can say that. Uh, yeah, well, they don't even I toss my salad with the vinegars all the time. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> all right. yes. Thank you. And she Beth, has for many, this. many more recipes on the website. <laughs> you can go check out. You got to check out her website. I check it out all the time. I peruse. You know, and, and we're on me, Facebook. Oh, tell me about your Facebook. Give me your Twitter. Tell me uh, about that. Facebook, Twitter, all of it. Uh, Foursquare, I Heart Olive Oil is the uh, how you can find us. I Facebook a lot. I travel a lot throughout the country. You do for trade shows, visiting customers, oh. looking for new products. So I, I Facebook follow me. I, I post a lot of follow crazy ben. pictures. I Heart totally, Olive Oil. I'll, totally I'll be do. posting some great pictures of, of the crew here tonight when I and get you home. can listen to this because we buy the glass show at Brett Hubbard is on iTunes. You can also go to SoFlo Radio on uh, YouTube and watch all of the uh, buy the glass and other great SoFlo. Uh, uh, definitely, you got a gr- lot of great shows. It's post time, awesome show. Mondays through Fridays, seven to fi- uh, five to seven p.m. and Thursdays six to seven. You got four, uh, the Pow Wow. You got the Jack four to Fred. six. Post four time. to six. Yeah, four to six. We love those guys. And uh, They're great. please, definitely, you know, we got a lot of great shows. SoFlow Radio, Buy the Glass Show, Best Sadowski, iHeartOliveOil dot com. Thank you so much, Ed Roberts, for putting together another wonderful show. Thank you so much to Beth, the Thank lovely you. and wonderful Beth. You Merry Christmas, great. Happy New Year. Oh, I love you guys. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Happy holidays. I We're don't hear the music week. chiming in, but uh, maybe George has to turn up the uh, there it radio. Is. Thank you so much, Dio, for sitting back there and drinking with us tonight, and George and Jason. And I just, you know, I'm feeling all warm. I don't know if it's the olive oil or the, or the vinegar. But, I think um, it's the vinegar. Yeah, I'm just having a wonderful time, and I it's can't awesome. thank you all enough for joining us for a whole other year. We'll catch you next year, or if, uh, you know, have a great holiday and a merry, merry, wonderful, and uh, wonderful one. Try some of these vinegars uh, cocktails at your next party. See you later. Love you guys, and uh, good night. SoFloRadio.com and SoFloTelevision.com. 